Hey guys, David here with Vares Media, and I wonder if you're feeling stable today, or perhaps you're a bit shaky, like a parallel universe where Nicolas Cage portrayed Tuco Salamanca and the Joker, perhaps at the same time. I'll never know the answer for sure, but one stability answer I can find out is how good the stabilization of the Sony a7 IV is across all the included options, plus an assessment of the relative strengths and weaknesses of each. Indeed, that is what we're going to be covering today, a stabilization review plus tips and observations on when and how each one is best. Just before I describe our structure and approach to testing, if you enjoy this video, then please do like, subscribe, comment, and check out the affiliate links to keep the channel going. Massive thank you for everyone who does, and that will certainly help to keep my content a bit more stable. So, how are we going to approach this? The way I see it, there are five stabilization types, from turned off completely, like most women when they interact with me, through to reliant on motorized gadgets. In this case, a gimbal rather than a dubious extension of that previous analogy. We are going to concentrate on the first four of those since they come built into the camera and therefore have no extra gear or extra cost requirements at the point of shooting unlike you would have with a gimbal. And we are going to test the stabilization methods across a handful of potential real world like scenarios. And just before we get to all that testing, let's do a quick recap of what all our options are to ensure we're all on the same page. Option one is steady shot being turned off, which means no stabilization and you'll get as much jitter and shake as you produce when you're holding the camera. Option two is standard steady shot. This is Sony's name for in-body image stabilization or IBIS, essentially a mechanism with within the camera that allows for small movements of the sensor to try and compensate for movements of the camera and therefore stabilize footage better. Option number three is active steady shot. This adds a digital crop on top of the aforementioned standard steady shot to get more stable results at the cost of a slightly narrower field of view since active steady shot crops in around 14%, which isn't too bad, but will the results make it worthwhile? We will find out, but not before covering option four, catalyst stabilization. More detail on that in some dedicated videos, but the short version is the Sony Wizards use gyroscopic data captured during the recording process to allow for precise stabilization of footage in post-production using their free Catalyst Browse software. So with all that clear, it's time to jump to our tests and see how these options compare. We start things off with a simple handheld shot where we're trying to keep things fairly steady. Thanks to my naturally slightly shaky hands, no steady shot quickly looks somewhat jittery. I clearly never would have been much of a military sniper. Standard steady shot smooths out that jitter very successfully without eliminating the slight movement which gives a handheld shot its organic feel. Active steady shot doesn't seem to provide dramatically different results here apart from the extra crop into the image. Catalyst smooths things out effectively too. It seems to retain a shade more of the original unstabilized movement when compared to active steady shot while eliminating all of the unsightly jitter. But all three stabilization options work fine and their differences here seem pretty marginal for this use case. Next, we have some simple movements, which I'm using as an umbrella term for the camera moving while the operator is static. So things like pans, tilts, small arcs, twists, and so forth. With a very steady hand, maybe you could make no steady shot work for these. Indeed, the extra weight of the a7 IV compared to the a7C that I'm used to does have the upside of helping to naturally steady things out a bit, but it's still pretty hard to imagine no steady shot being preferable in almost any situation here. Standard steady shot performed pretty well, especially for the simpler movements. It removes the more jarring and noticeable shake and jitter, but retains that handheld feel with a pleasingly natural vibe that may be very desirable for some shots. Active steady shot gives a more noticeable difference here with a somewhat smoother gliding feel that I can see working well if you want a bit less of that natural hand movement or if you're executing more complex movements. Catalyst does a great job with these simple movements and produces results somewhere in between our prior two methods. A bit less glidey and a bit more organic than active steady shot, while being a bit smoother and more seamless than standard steady shot, as well as being less prone to the very occasional slip up it can have. Again, all three methods work well, so the choice is mainly about matching to your particular use case and desired aesthetic. Now, as Pantera, noted advocates of low impact cardio, encouraged, it's time for us to walk. Here, any semblance of no steady shot being usable is completely lost. 
Shaky Cam is definitely a stylistic choice. Indeed, I enjoyed the original Bourne movies in spite of it. But Deliberate Shake is about the only scenario where I could imagine no steady shot being viable in these situations. Standard steady shot does not fare much better when it comes to walking. If there is a reduction in shake and jitter, I struggle to spot it very much in context, and therefore I really can't recommend using standard for walking, whether that's vlogging or anything else. By contrast, active steady shot starts to show its strength in these situations. This is actually good enough to vlog with, and while it's not perfect, if you pay a bit of attention and try to hold the camera steady and walk smoothly, I think you can get some really good looking results. If I stride more stridently, then you can still observe slight jarring movements from time to time, and you'll notice more impact of the not great rolling shutter of the a7 IV. Although I have to say, my experience with this hasn't been a big problem. But for an in-camera, no-hassle solution to stabilization, Active Steady Shot does a solid job here. This extends to simple walking for cinematic or b-roll shots too, and while they won't be completely smooth, I'd say that you can get results here that will look decent and will not stand out in a problematic way to an audience, unlike our earlier options. On to Catalyst, which was, and probably still is, my secret source of choice when it comes to vlogging. I consistently produce the best results on my ZV-1, ZV-E10 and A7C using Catalyst, and I'm not sure the A7IV is going to be an exception. We get a nice balance of preserving natural movement whilst completely smoothing out all jitter and shake. Plus, Catalyst can help with rolling shutter issues. See any of my ZV-E10 videos for a more dramatic comparison, but that does remain a nice bonus for the a7 IV, given, as I mentioned earlier, that some folks have had more trouble with rolling shutter. These benefits of Catalyst also carry over to non-vlogging walking shots, which work well and have a slightly different feel to active steady shot. My natural walk leaves a bit of up and down motion in the shots, but I think if you made a specific effort and practiced a bit, you could probably reduce that quite a lot with some stealthily styled stepping. Last and logically least likely locomotion is a loop of long loping leaps. Or to put it another way and continue our musical mentor mentions, let's do as Bruce Dickinson suggests and run to the hills. Indeed, once you see how running looks with no steady shot, it would be very reasonable to then run for your lives. This looks like more of a mess than two angry drunks trying to recreate a Jackson Pollock painting using roadkill. Standard steady shot does not fare much better. Perhaps there is fractionally less craziness when it's turned on, but I'd say it's still clearly unusable unless you're wanting that extremely shaky look for a specific reason. Active steady shot, despite its best efforts, is not enough to get our running footage smooth, though in fairness, I should point out that I decided to do this test on uneven ground in a random field, so it might fare better on a simpler surface. It does seem to keep a marginally more consistent image than standard steady shot, but still not really ideal or usable. We close this test with Catalyst, and even this gyroscopic genius cannot get things completely smooth, with a noticeable judder still there in the footage. However, it is a step closer to smoothness, and it might be closer to usable for you. It does also do the best job handling my running out of all of these options, to my eye. So, what can we conclude from all of this? Well, just before I summarize for you, if you have enjoyed the video, then please do like, subscribe, drop a comment, and check out the affiliate links to keep the channel going. Massive thanks to everyone who does. And speaking of going, if you are going to be shooting any kind of video that isn't explicitly designed to be shakier than withdrawal clinic espresso day during an earthquake, then I cannot recommend using no steady shot. Standard steady shot is a good choice for many handheld shots where the operator is static but the camera is moving. Plus, it has has a hidden bonus that I'll cover in just a second, so it's certainly useful, but it's unlikely optimal for walking or other more challenging shots. Active Steady Shot is a solid in-camera vlogging option, and a strong performer in other scenarios too, but comes at the cost of a modest crop and a faintly floatier flowing feel. It's a good choice for many situations, just be sure not to expect gimbal or GoPro style results, and you'll probably be quite pleased. 
Catalyst is arguably the best choice in the most challenging situations and it does a solid job at all other times too, but you do need to deal with the extra post-production time and effort. Plus, Catalyst requires a high shutter speed to avoid having more crappy artifacts than a low-budget Indiana Jones parody. So low-light or so-called cinematic 1 over 50 shutter shooting can be tricky, making active steady shot likely a better choice in those scenarios especially. Now, what was that bonus that I mentioned? Well, Catalyst can be applied on top of standard steady shot footage, at least using the unstabilized lenses that I've tested this with. So you can maybe shoot with standard steady shot and then stabilize even more later if you need a bit of a top up. There is no such backup option with active though, where the results are pretty all over the place. Overall, each stabilization option is good in different situations. So like a builder with a fear of commitment, it's up to you to make the tricky choice of which is the best tool for each job. Which one is best to use will depend on your appetite for post-production and any constraints around shutter speed and the feel of the shots compared to the smoothness that you want to achieve for each situation. Appetite for post-production. Sounds like a terrible Guns N' Roses album, perhaps the working title of Chinese democracy. And with that final dubious observation said, I can much less dubiously say, until next time, take it easy.